Konigsein, Bavaria, on a snowy Sunday morning, and the crowd being whipped up into excitement by the bobsleigh action at this oldest artificial ice track on the planet. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our broadcast of the final Wiesmann FIBT World Cup four-man bobsleigh race of the season. Also counting for the European Championships. I'm Martin Haven. Alongside me is our bobsled expert, John Morgan. And John, this track at Koenigsee is the oldest artificial track, but it still has so many different challenges. Well, they have uh, challenges three different places that are very significant. It really expresses a great personality of the track. Oscars Melbardis, his team has the start, no surprise there, the start record. But you gotta get in, get down. This little first curve, you gotta be settled because after this first curve, they come up with a four corner combination. Slag and Gruber, it's called the snake pit. Four S curves, right, watch this, left, right, left. It's tough for the skeleton sleds to get through there, much less a four man bobsled. Now this long straightaway, it's a bend around, it's like a chicane. You gotta hit a couple times, that's normal. Now the big Kreisel curve, Turbodrome, they call it. You have to exit here, slingshot effect into this bottom part, Kelstein curve, the labyrinth, and it's tricky through here. Now in a C curve, big speed into Echo Vaughn. This is where you gotta be real tricky, you start to go uphill here. You can lose a lot of time in his last 180 meters of this track through the finish. Real challenge here in Koenigsee. Well, it really is, and every one of those potential traps has caught victims already this morning in the women's race, but the slight snow that has been falling has not affected the level of competition. Stunning first heat in the women's encounter. What about the four-man World Cup? Well, Max Arndt, unless he crashes or disqualified and calls no points, will be the champion. Stephen Holcomb, exactly one win, 225 points behind. Alexander Zubkov is not here, so Holcomb looks certain to round out as the second man in the series this year. And Chris Spring for Canada may well end up third in the World Cup points race. That will all be decided in the next two hours worth of sliding here in Koenigsee. Bert Hefty yesterday claimed the two-man European Championship gold medal, a Swiss 1-2. Last year in the four-man competition, the Germans were strong. Max Arndt, the champion. Thomas Florschutz, third. Ben Hefty again on the podium in the silver medal position. Well, they're warming up here, John Morgan, in lightly falling snow, but it doesn't seem to be dampening their spirits any. Well, we saw the women's competition already one run, and it didn't affect that thing other than the board, the sleds that went 8, 9, 10, and 11. So look at the sleds, 7 to 10. Yep. They seem to have an advantage in the women's field. The, the first six, seven sleds acted like snow plows. Well, when the snow comes, you can never tell who's going to be benefiting and who's going to be adversely affected by the weather. What you can tell, though, is after the first heat, four sleds will at least no longer be competing. Only the fast 20 of our 24 starters will go through into heat two. Starting the final World Cup four-man bobsled race of the season, the European Championships for our European teams as well. Chris Spring of Canada, standout season this year for him, Jesse Lamson, Cody Sorensen and Ben Cokewell. Trackside, Martin Haven and John Morgan calling the action. Well, they're the Rabbits, and the Rabbits aren't really having an advantage being the first guys down. Watch the 43.6 speed, because they might act like a snowplow. We won't know until the next sled comes down, but watch all these speeds. 63 kilometers an hour, they're already doing 40 miles an hour, really accelerating hard through those S's, the Schlangengruber. And then this straight, which is a three-corner bend away, as the Americans call it. On a straight away. Two of one. That's 75, 76 now miles an hour. It's tricky here. Yeah. This gets fun. Oh, has a great line, Chris Spring. Really carving his way down the track with some nice lines, but sometimes perfect lines aren't fast. We saw that in the women's race. He had a great run yesterday, but teammate Justin Cripps won the two-man race, his first ever podium appearance in two-man. So the Canadians are hugely excited about today's race on this track. Just a full second off the track record. With the snow, with the conditions, that's expected. The start, four-man bobsledding. They 
practices over and over and over. Look at the number two guy waiting for the three guy. They settle in together. The hands come up to the helmet, and now they bring their arms in and settle for some hellacious ride. Well, there is Chris Spring. Happy Australia Day, everyone. Back home in Australia. Indeed, from Darwin in Australia's Northern Territories. It is Australia Day today. Well, next up is our reigning world champion and European champion in the four-man box lane, Max Arndt. He's had two wins so far this season and will be World Cup champion unless he stacks it in the first run or is disqualified for some technical infringement. Well, the bad day for the Germans yesterday, the worst day in Bavaria I've ever seen for the German bobsled team for the men. And this guy right here, he got a lot of pressure on him. He's got to deliver the goods. John Spear, not the normal brakeman here. Start. 490, 800 behind the Canadians. And this, John Morgan, you know, we've been scratching our heads a lot this weekend. What is up with the Germans this season? Well, it's, it's not one thing, is it? It's everything. Last year, Arndt was the standout four-man driver. This year, the starts aren't quite where they need to be, and, and the kit doesn't quite seem to be where it needs to be. I had some conversation last night. I heard a lot. I heard way too much information last night from <laughs> a number of different sides. But he's flying now. He's going to catch him here in the bottom. Speed was a kilometer a kilometer better, and that reflects to why he's catching him here in the bottom. So Max Arm, the lead by boy, three a little hundreds. skid, though, out of the Echo Vaughn, and boy, he really carved there, but he fouled for oh, ten hundredths in the bottom. You didn't see a Volmeister being that happy uh, with that run. Well, he spent so much time being interviewed by German TV last night at the big uh, gala dinner that we were at. I don't think he's having much of a weekend of it. I got a great point. One of the German journalists asked him if he was pessimistic about the competition going into yesterday. He said, I'm not pessimistic, I'm realistic. He knew what was coming. Yep. Max Arndt, we'll find out how good you are, Max, coming up real quick. In the two-man yesterday, if any of the top Russians have been here, there wouldn't have been a German in the top ten. They've got to turn that round Watch today. this skid here on the exit of Echo Von. You're coming up, Hill. You cannot. You have to be perfect. I saw a little skid. Look at the back guy that are coming out. So I saw that live, and of course the slow mo, the, the guys in the truck. They know it's more about the sport than we do. I tell you what, I've got to say, what a stunning job the guys in the TV crew are doing. The cameraman and in the truck. Hats off to all of you guys. Now Thomas Florschutz, late change. No, Kevin Kusker at three. Yanis Becker is in from yesterday's two-man race. So he is starting in Florschutz's four-man. You know, that, that upsets the four-man timing. I mean, Joshua Bloom is a rookie onto this team, so now you just throw Giannis Becker in as a replacement. So let's watch Giannis Becker, the big guy on the right, on our left now. Yeah, he's, he's so well practiced. Look at that. Yeah. It's like that another day at the office. Great start. And yet they really good start speed. Yeah, there is really a good start impressive. speed there. Very good start. 63.5, these are all better speed numbers than Art, but Art was max on the bottom part of the track. Now, floor shoots can pull it out of the fire here. He'll these be very happy. are normal, the speed 122.7, 122.7. Yeah. This is similar speed. He should hold it here on the bottom. He's got a 10th lead, and it's just only at seven. That looks good. Remember, we saw Max Art with a little difficulty here on the Echo Vaughn. Let's see if Florschutz can be straight. Oh, it's down to five. Wow, this is going to be very close for the lead of the race. Germany 1-2. Florschutz leads by 400. He's not happy Chris, with that either. Knows there's a lot of talent still yeah. waiting to come. We need to have that, uh, yeah, Volmer. Yeah. Well, you know, in any ordinary season, this would be tough for the Germans to take, especially in his home track, Langens. But this is, you know, two weeks out from the games. See, Thomas is happy with that. Yeah, he should be. He, he hasn't had a lot of success against Art. Look at these pictures. Uh, come down. It's not straight. Look at the way it bends around. So he's, he negotiates that four-man around like it is straight. That's normal hit here. These two hits, bang. And then another bang. That's normal. And then here in the... Bottom part of the track. Look at the energy. Look at the helmets moving around. This is in the last two curves. Boy, you can throw away a lot of time there. And I, it looked like he was really carved that last curve. So German sleds one, two. But uh, is this 
Bearded Wanda going to spring a surprise. Beard mode for Justin Cripps, James McNaughton, Tim Randall and Brian Barnett. Yesterday's two-man winner. Well, I'm sure he had a good evening. 485. Speed 43.8. That is great velocity. That's the best velocity we've seen so far. 63.7 is the best speed. As I've been saying for the last three weeks, this is a rising star in the Canadian bobsled program. Do we know if there's any Bavarian parentage in Justin Cripps? Is there any way Langham can persuade him over to the dark side? 122.5. He's only a whisker away. Some back here. This could be down to the hundredth. Is he going to be in front of the German slice? Well, he was perfect on the bottom in two man yesterday. A little high there, and that cost Oh, him. but look, he brushes the wall. He gets the height, and he doesn't get the time. mistake, the back end Little comes out. Real in problems oh, on the bottom. Word. Splits but still, the German. Still, still. This is, I mean, look at the mistakes he just made. He's 300s yeah. off, off the medals right there. Look at this. He's, That's worthy of Yavon. He's 100th ahead of Art. Yeah. And he made the mistakes of the sled was airborne into the last curve. This is Echovat. He's too high there. You saw the head snap. That's the G-force and the pressure point. He's way too high here. He goes from curve to flat, and then he's still not catching up. Watch the next curves. Here, this is where the exit here, he comes late, the sled flops. Now watch the back end of the sled here go airborne. Look at this, look at the right runner way up in the air. He lost all sorts of time and he's only 300s out of the lead. That's 1,600 pounds of sled being bounced in the air. That's the G-forces involved, boys and girls. Okay. So, oh boy, I thought we had an exciting women's race. We have got some racing on the our snow's hands. Snow's coming in too. So yeah. When you hear that little, that little bell up there, the coaches will tell these athletes, as soon as that thing goes, boom, we're out of here. Yeah, see them sweeping at the start there. Mel Bardis nursing a back injury. We saw that yesterday when the start times were the norm. Two World Cup format events in St. Moritz and Eagles. And 482, 43, 7. That's not the velocity that the Canadian sled just had. 63 1 is the worst velocity of any sled that's come down. Yeah, he's already starting to squander that start. He started the same as Chris Spring, but less velocity going into the S's. The speed. He'll be lucky to get low 122. Oh, as soon as I say that. He has the best speed, so... Fabian flying here, 300. Not a bad line. So hard to get a four-man down through that line. Remember what Cripps just did here. Let's see if Bill Barnes can be straight. Great He's the height. winner, and oh, he pulls away. Here we go. He's this is why Christoph, Christoph Longen was not happy. He knew. Boy, I was wow. on him about... The speed, he's losing speed up at the top, up in front of the, in the snake pit. But hey, there's a reason why he won, why he won the last two races in St. Moritz and Eagles. Yeah, he's starting to become a very he's good pilot. pilot. Boy, he's good. He doesn't just have one good heat. You can see the back brace he's wearing. Yeah. Look at these lines. Exit. This is where he did it, where he started accelerating away. He gets through this little unbelievable challenge. Kesselstein curve, and then into the C curve. What pressure. There's Max Arndt. All right, here we go. OK, so here is our four-man Olympic champion. Three wins to start this season for Stephen Holcomb and the crew of the night train. Now in night train two. And they went quick. So look at the guys barely out of the track sweeping. The Americans went as quickly as they possibly could go. They need a train hooter on that to make sure the track's clear. 44 to the velocity was the best of anybody. And that's what they want. Oh, and he's got a huge 64 kilometers. is bigger speed than anybody. It is. But he's now in the snake pit. He's had some problems here. <laughs> and there's 1,400s up. Better momentum than anybody so far. Down the bend away. And takes the tax. 122 8 the best speed. 122 9 for Holcomb. Here we come. The night train, too, is coming. How can he get through here? Yeah. Ooh, 18. Nails Ooh, the exit. This is good. No, can he be straight here on the Echo Vaughn? This is where you can lose a lot of speed here. Olympic champion. Oh, he's making. pulling away. He's playing for the gold medal here. He's desperate to try and win this race wow. and take the season title. Oh. 49-11. What a run from Stephen Holcomb.
to lead by a quarter of a second. Wow, that's what that trick crew tries to do for him. Kurt Thomas Savage, Stephen Lancer and Chris Folks give him the lead he needs at the start. Another day at the office for the night train. He was perfect. Look at these pictures. That's not straight. He takes that meticulous line. That's a normal tap, second tap. But this, look at this meticulous drive through the Kelstein curves. Watch the back end of the sled. This is the best line. Look at that. Nothing. No variance there at all. Didn't touch anything. Wow, Stephen, pretty good. Stephen Holcomb leads the race from Oscars Malbardis and Thomas Florschutz, Wheel and Engineering leading here in Koenigsegg. Racing the Daytona 24 hours this weekend as well. Busy, busy time. Well, next up is John Jackson of Great Britain. Decent start draw for Jack O, Stu Benson, Bruce Tasker and Joel Fearon. This is the A team for Great Britain's four-man challenge in Sochi. Jackson getting stronger with every day. Off to this team, these three guys have been pushing the drivers about 70 percent, and they've been competitive all year. 43 7 is very good velocity. Achilles tear in July, major surgery and recuperation. He can't even run to warm up. The only he's time he runs is when he's holding onto the front handle of the sled. He's got a trampoline up top that he bounces on to warm up. This is this is decent considering the start and the speed. Now he's going to need the 122, 7 or 8. 122, 8. Great speed from George, the full man. This is the same speed as Melbardis. Good lines here. He will definitely go into second. He is in Keeps second up. place at the moment. What a run for John Jackson of Great Britain. This could put him in contention for a European Championship medal. Yes. Clean at the bottom. Still in second place. Great what a run. run. That's Come what on. you need. Last day of regular season. John Jackson finally gets the mojo working. This looks a lot like the women's race. The people that go about 6 to 12 had a better track to work with than the sleds that came down first. Well, that is confidence inspiring for John Jackson. He really needs that. The lines. Look at the perfect aerodynamic form by those athletes behind him. Watch the exit coming uphill. You have to be so perfect here. He hits a little bit. He lost a little time there, but boy, John Jackson. Top European sled at the moment. We're only seven into our start list of 24. Next up, Baird Hefty, silver medalist in the four-man Europeans last year and gold in the two-man yesterday. Alex Bauman, Jörg Egger and Thomas Amrine on the crew of this Swiss One four-man. Listen for the Swiss bells. The Swiss got a pretty good weekend going. The woman's Bob. Meyer, she's in second place. Yeah. Two 100s off the lead. Big start from Hefty, 483. Only Melbardis and Holcomb have gone quicker. 63-6. Similar, similar to the British sled. Oh, boy, this is good lines. This is very good. This is better than the British sled. Oh, big hit there, that second one, though. He is the best speed. Nobody had that type of speed. This is what the City of Sleds did yesterday. They were The Swiss like this track. Here he comes. This is going to be minutes. enough. I got If he's straight here on Echovon, he'll be the leader. Four hundreds of a second. He has a chance to get to him. But a little tap there is going to hurt him. Seven hundreds back. 49.8 in second ahead of John Jackson. The Swiss have such a tradition on this track. The European Championships, I think it was 2001. Martin Ann in first. Kristen Reich second, Marcel Rohner third. I've seen the Swiss sleds do very well on this track for a long time. Okay, Childs tweeting at Bob Skelly TV, suggesting one of the problems that's up with Germany is the lack of Manny Mahata, but it, everybody else has just raised their game so much here, John. Look at Hefty in the format. Look at the runner tips there. He's steered right there. Back end. Remember how smooth Holcomb was here. Yeah. Bit of a bump. Look at the airborne runner. Yeah, See, Holcomb went right shot. through there. He would have beat Holcomb if he didn't make that mistake. Great shot. Wow. Ridiculous. Down in Francesco Friedrich with Alex Mann, my broadcast partner yesterday morning, Gregor Birnbach and Torsten Margis on the crew. 
Okay, game on oh, right here right for up. Germany. Now they're resetting back into the huddle. Game on right here. Friedrich, he's got, he's in that seven, eight, nine, ten position where the track was really fast to the athletes coming down. 482, 438, very good off the speed. Very good start. Very and this good kid, speed. 21, is a stunning athlete as well as a great driver. 63, 7 was better than hefty. Velocity, I like more the velocity than the times. Yeah. Ooh, seven, a little slight tap. That's the same 700 deficiency that Hefty had, but Hefty had huge speed. 122.5, that's Not off bad. in the speed. Nearly a kilometer slower than Ben Hefty. That'll cost him two Ooh, he's late. Watch bottom. out here, watch the bang. Nope, yeah. Not bad. He got through there nicely. Can he maintain the bottom part of the track? He could end up in fourth, oh, fifth place he's falling. The sixth position. More, more depression. Is he run a choice again? Is there something up with look the FPS Look it, look it, look it. Christoph Longen. German crowd, they are not used to this. They, they were in Bavaria. Well, they're loving the start. That's all the brake men can do is give their driver a chance. Friedrich will take any chance he can get now. Start. Look at these huge men. Look at their athleticism on that little sidebar. Look at Alex Manor too, John. Never look, mind. Wait, look at him waiting to get in with the rest of them. Look Never at mind, this. tough to get him in a bobsled. It was hard to fit him in the car. Look at the booth. push bars. Yep. Push bars are such a different, different technology than everybody else's. Wow. There is Friedrich. 23 years old. Yeah, we're going to be seeing a lot of him yeah. for the next decade. He hasn't even got big yet. Yeah. Or experienced. Come on. Well, next up, Lyndon Rush of Canada Come with Lascelles Brown, Dave Bissett, and Neville Wright on the sled. And the Canadians really rampaging through the German ranks yesterday, weren't they? Look at Rush head down and charging, desperate to really put in a good run. Final World Cup race before they pack up and head to Sochi. 487 getaway. 437, which is respectable. 63.5, which is where, again, yeah. he's got to be plus six or seven down here and the exit of the snake pit, plus 14. Okay, good run down the straight. Could bring half of that gap down. 123 kilometer speed would be what he needs, yeah, and he's got it. Go, baby. He had a good day yesterday. He won a bronze medal on the two-man by only a hundredth over the American. But he has a chance here. 1,200's back. He's in fourth place on split times at the moment. Can he Perfect. make it into the top three? Great Good exit. exit. Avoids the brush with the wall that John Jackson had. This could put him in front of the British sled. Does. Does. Into third place. Holcomb, wow. Hefty, Rush, Jackson, Melbardis, Friedrich. Your top six. The Germans are in six, seven, nine. Of ten sleds. The world champion of the time. And we're in Bavaria. Yeah. We still okay. got talent to come. I, I, I think the police are going to come and arrest us for this. I mean, if this doesn't happen in Germany. That look at the start. Great velocity. The velocity is how you get in the sled. Watch the hands here. Look at David Bissett. Look forward. Look at the hands come up together. They cross elbow. I mean, it's it's, such unbelievable. it's like out. synchronized swimming. This is unbelievable. Choreography on ice. And they're wearing about as little as well. There's Linda. So your top six, Stephen Holcomb leading narrowly from Ben Hefty, Lyndon Rush, John Jackson, Oscar Smalvardis, Francesco Frigi giving chase. Next up, the second of our US sleds. Talk about talent still to come. We've got Nick Cunningham and Corey Butler still to come for the USA. Abe Morlu on the brakes. Dennis Robinson. Get in there, four or five hundred times. Ooh, a little late getting in from the left side. Push bar still out, comes in. 43.7 is decent for the start time. It is. And this is the night train, too. Holcomb gave way to Cunningham, allowed to drive the sled, and that's a mistake there, and he's way off. Now, this is the one that won the gold in Vancouver, isn't it? The original, the genuine, honest-to-goodness gold medal winning night train. What a, what a weapon to have in your hands, to know it was the best sled with the best driver last game. He's considerably off the pace, gonna have to be perfect on the bottom here to keep himself in the top seven or eight. 
He's a new driver. Yeah. Tracks like this. Now, ah, little skid. Four back. tenths. And this looks like about nine. Still being amongst the Germans. 11th place. In fact, that's the slowest run we've seen so far. Oh, yeah, he lost it away at the bottom. Time. The exit of the S's can tell it all. He had the worst exit of anybody in the X's. The, you know, the S's, they call it the Viper Nest, the Snake Pit, the Slag and Gruber. Oh, look at that. You know, pain off that. That's from when he crashed. Look at the guy on the left. We talked about him. I think that's Johnny Quinn, is it? Look at he slipped. Yeah. Look at that second yeah. foot come up. Johnny Quinn can't Look get in. That, that can't means get in. Justin Olsen can't sit down, and it just unsettles the drive. Wasn't he knows there's something going it's on It's not behind. their normal team there. Remember, you know, Dallas Robinson yeah. using a brakeman. So here in the snake pit. Got him. Yeah. That's the worst line out of the snake pit we've seen. And look he at got him. bit. He knows there is Cunningham. No Corey Butler in the four-man race today, so it is Holcomb and Cunningham in the two night trains. There are two Latvian sleds as well. Oscar's Cuba Manis next up. Rivis Brox, Helvis Lucis, and Virus Leibomps, his two-man brake man. And again, what a sensational find for Latvia. This kid is 20 years old and already in challenging for a top 10 in the world position every time out. A couple of years of development. Oh boy. Watch out. A little slip there at the start. Start 43.5 is very good velocity. The whole start area is under cover, so they shouldn't yeah. have snow in the spikes. Strange something happened at the start there. They should have been better than this. Yeah. 2,500 back, 12th place. So they're battling with Nick Cunningham in USA 2. Ooh, hits there. That's not good. At the slowest speed Ooh. we've seen so far. And he's got an inconsistent line here. Cries, we'll let's see if he gets through here. This little nails the landing. Ice passageway that is yeah. so different. That'll help reduce the gap to the leaders. Still in 12th spot. This is a 29-year-old, or it should be a 20-year-old that yeah. we could see for a couple more Olympics. Well, what's he done? Maybe this is his second race weekend ever here? Yeah. Maybe. He was a former decathlon guy. It's OK. Oscars, one of the old Oscars that drive these Latvian sleds. All in time, buddy. Yeah. Don't worry about it with your talent. This is it. Watch him hit the wall. Can't do that. Four cries. This takes away. That's why he had the less, two and a half kilometers less than Holcomb, who had the top speed. And then he's the up and down, the big W effect. Got to point out with the Latvians, four years ago, neither of their drivers had ever sat in the front seat of a bobsled. Four years ago, well, let's move on from Vancouver for the Dutch four-man program, because Edwin van Kalka needs some mental stability now. He's having such a tough season. Again. And Cocker's had a lot of success on this track. He won his first ever medal here, and I think it was a, also a European championship medal. Great athlete. Just struggling. Boy, is that start speed, the velocity there. They are over almost a full kilometer down to Holcomb right there. And it's all about how you run and get in the sled. 2200 is back, but that velocity, it's not bad. He cracks a high 122 kilometers here, 122 to three. Edwin, first guy to admit, I'm in a slow. I got to get better. Get better, better start. He usually operates with better starts. That's late. That's a major mistake. Yeah. Still not bad. He's still top seven or eight, ten. And he lost ten hundreds on that last yeah. skid out of Echo Bond. He had, I hate to say, it, the worst exit of anybody there. Not great. Huh? 49, 59, look, at, look at all the nice. snow on his visor. Look yeah. how wet it is. Well, that is part of this wet, falling snow problem, and Jerry will be watching that. Yeah, you've got to probably ask these guys, what kind of vision did you have down here? Look at the exit here. That's late. Watch him come over top the right wall. Going uphill, that's a triple mistake, going uphill. The amount of time you can lose. I wonder if he had vision problems, because his mask was really, really had a lot of moisture on it. Yeah. Well, you'll see through that when you like the windscreen on your car. Good morning to Lizzie Arnold, just woken up in the home as World Cup champion for women's skeleton. 
She's tweeting this morning at Bob Skelly TV. Next up, Simone Batata of Italy, Simone Fontana, William Frulani, and Francesco Costa, the four man crew. Bertazzo just gives up so much time in the first 50 meters. 43 flat, that's the same speed, the velocity that the Dutch just had. The top speed was Holcomb, 44 kilometer, the speed, that's why Holcomb's leading the race. That with negotiating a couple of curves down yeah. here called <laughs> the snake pit yeah. and the turbo bomb and the, uh, you know, avoiding the all the hurdles. Curve yeah, and, exactly. You know, 122 six, not bad. Yeah. All these, just easy to come through here. This little tiny, very close on the speed from the Italian Top 10 run on its way. Look how close everybody gets to this track. What an atmosphere. If you ever want to go. come to a bobsled race. Good run uphill, could settle in, slipping out of the 10. Bad. 12th Eight. place. No, yeah, back in the 10th. Right the final corner, tied with Van Kalka. That, that, that just says he's just a good driver. Yeah. To have that worst velocity of the 14 sleds, tied for the worst velocity at the start, he drives himself at 10, tied for 10 with Van Kalka. Yep. Van Kalka wasn't that bad at until the bottom part of the track. And here, look at the people leaning over. I mean, they can almost touch them as they go by. Look well, at the airborne. Watch the, the airborne. Watch this sled go airborne. Yeah. A little bit of air. It's that little bump look coming up picture. under our camera. This is 75, 78 miles an hour. Yeah. <laughs> this little shoot. Great stuff. Simone Matazzo tied for 10th. Next up from the Czech Republic, Jan Verber, Dominic Sushi, Jan Staklaska, and Mikhail Vacek. And last night we were chatting to the only Czech four man driver to win a European Championship gold medal, Ivo Danilevich. That was in Cortina in two man pops. So he beat Andre Langa by one one hundredth of a second in the two man. Didn't he smile when he recalled uh, that? Race? We talked about yeah. it. We talked about it yesterday. And, you know, the Czechs, you know, they had some great push athletes in the 90s, early. Evo came along. He, he always was competitive. Right here now, I mean, the speed, they only had 42.8 speed I mean, compared to the 44 that Polka had. A little rattle and a long skid into Yenna. 121 2. At 75 and change speed. Can see him outside the top 12. Decent run there. I mean, Verba's a good driver, a good driver, but he doesn't have the physical mass that Danilevich has. He's a much slighter athlete still. Danilevich is 43. You used to see him in the weight room in the day, and he looked like one of the athletes in training. Yeah. 49, 8, 7, 14th place ahead of Oscar's Kiba Manis. Kiba Manis driving for two years. Jan Berber, just 31 now. Birthday is in three days. A little, little up and down. Big W with the Kreisel, which not the perfect line, the consistency, but the exit here wasn't bad. It comes through this meticulous part of the track. The whole track's meticulous. Yeah. Stephen Holcomb of the USA, 700s in front of a bad hefty, and a very close pack racked up behind them. They'll be falling like nine pins if somebody has a demon run in the second heat. And might it be this man? Who knows? Rico Pader in Switzerland, too, slid to silver yesterday under the radar. Gregor Bauman in the four man equivalent might just do that. Patrick Lerschner, Fabio Baljum, and Seaman Friedley are the rest of this four-man crew. See the track workers sweeping hard in that short shoot down to the first corner. Because you can lose time there, but you'll never get back. 42-9. Well, got a lot of work to do, but if he follows suit like all of the other Switzerland sleds in the last couple of days, yeah, he'll do well because the Swiss have just turned on the afterburners in bobsledding. Not only the men, but the women are with one eight to go. Fabian Myers and second place. Well, he's not got the speed that Hefty had, 123-3. Bauman, 15th start, 16th place on split times. 11th or 12th, unless he finds some afterburner here. That's yeah. No, he's not like Rico Pater yesterday. My 
White struggle to make the second heat, 49-9-7. No, just just lost a half of them. 30, 40 hundreds in the bottom part of the track. He was only 46 hundreds down on the exit of the prize, but he's now he's 86 hundreds down. Not happy. Will not be going to the games. High line there. Watch him come down. A lot of violent there. Tips the take on coming in. And that's down. Echo Vaughn, C curve, Echo Vaughn, Zeal curve. I mean, that's where you uphill section here. Look how flat he comes quickly. That's pretty good energy there. Maybe almost too much steering because he lost a lot of time on the bottom part of the track. Next up, Francis Loic Kosteg with Roman Einrich, who's his two man brakeman, Floral Ribe and Elie Lefort. Recreating the French box sled dream. These guys were based at the track at La Plaine. Yesterday, we got a note in the TV truck that I had mentioned that Gerard Cristo was their coach, and I did not mention that. I said Gerard Cristo is the longtime five time Olympian from France who was here with his wife. We know Bruno Menjon is their coach. They're also being looked after by a guy that for many years helped out the okay. Monaco team. Okay. Hey. Let's see what they can do. Anything low 490s is going to put them in the frame for a top 15 run. 497. They're back in the Major sled. Remember the last yep. two weeks they were in the. Uh... They had a, a rented Swiss sled, didn't they? Yeah. So back to a Bruno, Bruno Major. Yeah. Uh, Swiss sled uh, Martin Gallica used to race. He's selling up all his kids. And you know, remember the French have two different formats in the Olympic Games. This one qualified the hard way through the yeah. World Cup circuit, and the other French sled was through the Europa Cup circuit with enough points. Ooh, late. Watch out for the back end here. It was pretty good. He's, he, we, we've seen some great lines by him. All year. I mean, he's he's right up there, one of the impressive he young pilots. He's definitely season. got some talent. Yeah. yeah. He's got a couple years being polished up. Oh, I think he's got a good chance. 49-8-8. That leaves him in 15th. Kiba Manis and Bauman behind him. That should be good enough. You would think to keep him in the second hit. Laplan logo on the sled. That's where he's from. Yeah. We hope to get back to Laplan next year. We think love that track. Here's this exit. Oh, into this so meticulous. He looks late there. I got it alarmed. Ke Kekelstein curve, and but he rolls it around pretty nice in the transition here. And a Kekelstein to C curve was respectable. Uh -oh. We know the music. Yeah. Guess who's coming? It's Australia Day, and here come the Aussies. Heath Spence, Dustin McPherson, who's new to the team lineup this season. Gareth Nichols and Lucas Stig Marta on the back. You gotta hand it to Heath Spence. He's the coach, the manager, the fundraiser. He's done it all to get Australia into the games. And but before him, Adrian Di Piazzo, a guy named Philip Morgan Giles back in the 70s. Australians have really been naked in the bobsled okay. world for support. If they could ever figure out how many million athletes are down there, down under. Those rugby league, rugby union players, those footy players that play Australian roles. How we can't. Ooh, look at that. that that's a big mistake there, Kurt. You know, but why they can't, is, with all those wonderful athletes, they can't find a way to get the Australians more support. I mean, this guy's. If you could ever just concentrate on what he's supposed to do as an athlete, but he's got to organize everything. Yeah, he's the travel arranger, the uh, travel agent, the planner. Does it, yeah. It is it all a huge weight. Of course, as his day job works at the Calgary track, does uh, taxi bob rides as well. He did about 51 days at the Calgary Stampede. He was sore for a month. I bet it was. But hey, people in Australia listening, find a way to get this guy some support. Yeah. Now, this guy Tell you deserves what. everything he can get. Cause Talk about Aussie battlers. These guys are among the very yeah, 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 yeah. toughest athletes. And they are working with less than... You know, I mean, you know, it's him. Budget. Yeah. You know, he's marching, the, his guys are marching to Olympic parade because of his efforts. Yeah. 18th place at the moment for East Spence of Australia. The lines. Look at the heads back there. Line up pretty good. Dives out of the curve too early and going uphill. That's a no-no. 
It's oh, okay, buddy. Oh, may not be a happy it's Australia okay. day for Heath Spence, but they've got a chance still in the second heat. Now, next up for Poland is David Kupczyk, Daniel Zaleski, Pavel Moros, who was on the back of the two-man sled yesterday, and Mikhail Kasperovic. Apologies to anybody who actually speaks Polish. We, there's a few guys in the truck. Best. <laughs> yeah. A few guys down there in our truck. A few guys in the truck are cringing at the pronunciations. Let's see if they can root on the poles to get a top 20 result here in this first heat. 20 sleds go through from our 24 starters. <laughs> David Kupchak is personal best of the year yesterday. Two man European Championships. I figure he must have finished close to the top 10. You know, because he was like exactly with results, but he, he moved up from like 19th, 20th to like 15th, I think. Yeah, best result, 18th place in the third race of the season in Lake Placid. And this is his, and his fifth World Cup race. Yeah, he's been down on the Europa Cup gathering points. And Andre explained to us why he was doing what he was doing. And... There's more than one way to skin a cat. It's about your overall ranking in all competitions. The Polish Federation, they reformed. And all the great athletes they have in Poland, especially in track and field. That's no reason this nation can't be more competitive. And... 6 he's in 18th place ahead of Heath Spence from Australia, and now it is the battle to make it into the second got a chance. I think he's got a chance. He has got a chance. It's a Poland, couple of rookies coming. In 1963, Poland had 43 two-man teams in their national championship. I mean, so this nation, it, you know, has got the bobsled background with all of the athletes they have in Poland. Look at the back end of the sled come up here. He's not the only one's done that into the finish curve. Boy, you feel you that. You think it's over? It's not over till you crawl across that blue line right there. David Kupchak. When you're a World Cup champion in women's skeleton, what do you do on your Sunday morning, your first day back home in your own bed? You watch the men's four-man live online. Of course you do. Nikolai Estrate of Romania with Bogdan Barakalia, Emil Peptea, and Florin Kratuin, his two-man brakeman. Romanians do pretty well on this track. Top 10 finish in the two man at the World Championships there in 2011. Estrada, motorcycle guy, broke his wrist, I think, in 2012 13. Early, he was in the, in the United States, I think, when he did it. And he still hasn't reached what he was a couple years ago. Look at these lines, though. I mean, for the all the start speed deficiencies and yeah. everything they got. This is... That was a bit of a classic tap, tap, tap all the way down. Pinball. Pretty good lines there, boy. There's a lot of head showing. Yeah. They get rattled around at the bottom. They're really uh, aerodynamically fit in there. Great man for him, Kratzer, he's getting bumped out of his seat. This looks like about 19th place. Just in front 19th. of the Aussies, yes. He's got a chance. They still have a chance to qualify. One more sled. Gorlachov from Russia should get him. Yeah. 20 sleds down. The, I don't know about the Italian, Slovak, or the Serbian. They're gonna, it's going to be a reach. Look at him get in here. Look at the number two man. Very looking, very, very educated. Look at the hands come up and down. Do you think the Romanians have practiced this before? Watch that last head start to go down. Look at the brake, but they'll start to get lower. He's checking on the push bars. Okay, let's get in an aerodynamic profile and see what happens. Snow coming down heavier with 20 sleds already completed the run. Stephen Holcomb from the USA, the Olympic champion, leads by 700 from our two man. European champion yesterday, Bert Hefty of Switzerland. Four sleds remain, and now they've got to try and go faster in less beneficial conditions than those that went before them to make the race. First up is Alexey Gorlachev of Russia, Filip Egorov, Yuri Selikov, and Sergei Prudnikov. Very experienced brake men behind this single Russian driver this weekend, the 32 year old from Bratsk. Filip Egorov, the veteran. Two in the sled. Well, if they're the here, used to be the third driver out yeah. on the circuit. Well, if they're here, you know his brake men are not in the lineup for the A teams in Sochi. And 
he will not be sliding in the games either. All the Russian Olympic teams are back home at the Sankey Sliding Centre, getting more ice time to try and do their best and guarantee some medals for home audience. Korolachov was in the World Championships here in 2011. Yeah, yeah, he's been sliding a long while. Manny Mahata won that World Championships for Germany, 2011, four men. He's in the crowd watching. Yes, he is. Figure that out. Well, the reason he's not driving is the others were better than him in the selection trials. This isn't bad. This is a 14th this place is 14, at the moment. 15, so he's five. in and he spends his out. Not a bad drive at all, no. Alexey Gorlachev. Pretty experienced pilot. He's seen all. He's been on the World Cup yeah. circuit for three or four years. I, I don't driving. Know. Well, he's been driving since 2003, but he's been in and out of the way. He hasn't really done much World Cup racing since Vancouver. Watch the second guy get in here. He's waiting. Come on, come on, get in. Get your feet underneath me so I can sit down. Ooh, look at the hands. They almost touch the ice when those guys break yeah, the hands. Yeah, don't they, though? And again, this is not a totally experienced team. You know, they probably pushed together before, but what, Gorlachev? Yeah. The well, experience he was, he's got? He was seventh and ninth in the two-man and the four-man in Vancouver and has not done a World Cup race in the last couple of seasons. Not Sebastian Vettel, no. Good call, though. It is Lucas Schnitzer of Italy with Samuele Romanini, Ugo, uh, Constantino Ugi, and Giorgio Berdini on the Italy 2 sled. Sam Romanini. Look, he pushes up front. Yeah. One of the few drivers that push up front with their feet in the ice. Look at Fabio to, or, uh, yeah. uh, Tosini. Fabio Tosini, yeah, yeah, built the sled. Built the sled. Look at the push bar still out. That's not good, the speed way off. But hey, it's good to see Italy with two sleds. Yeah. And Italy will be going to the games with the women's bobsled athlete. This is his four-man World Cup debut, made his two-man World Cup debut yesterday. Should have raced in Eagles. He was on the entry list, but instead he did the World, uh, Europa Cup races in Samaritz that same weekend. That's pretty good speed. Yeah. One of the better speeds, the last six, eight sleds. 61 back. This At looks like he's going to make the cut. in the race. This looks like it's going to knock the Romanian out if he yeah. keeps it up. Watch the straightness here. Design, bit of a skid. This looks like 17th place. Hit there to finish. And he's 18th. in 18th place. Hey, yeah. That's come on, Wolfgang. That's not bad for this game. He's course. in, and Nikolai Estrate and he spends our out. So Lucas wow. Schnitzer makes the cut on his World Cup debut in four man. Not bad. No, you can't argue with that, can you? The speed. He really had decent speed down in the Chrysler. Watch how the heads look at the aerodynamic profile. We can see a lot of people. He's a skid there, too, going uphill. Yeah, he was 72, and all of a sudden he went back to 86. He's tied for 18th blue. Oh. Bowman, look at the airborne. Not the first sled we've seen do that. Not the last either. Nice little challenge there in that finish. Yes, curve. it is. Every curve here is a challenge. I mean, that's one of the things about ice tracks. Just when you think you've got it, it comes back at you. Next up, the oldest man in the competition, 43-year-old Milan Janicek for Slovakia. Martin Tesovic, Lukas Kozienka, and Yuri Makros, Mokras rather, are the team. Hotelier and businessman, and arch bobsled fanatic. Such great guys. This is what the sport used to be. Martin Tosovic, weightlifter, European champion medalist, weightlifting. Ooh, there's that bump in that first curve. You don't want to see that bump in the first curve. Like that. Wow, look at this beautiful sled painted. He's so cool. Well, listen, we've talked about Heath Spence being, you know, the driving force behind Australian bobsledding. It is all because of Milan that Slovakia has a team at all. 120.6. This is not going to be the speed he needs to get him into the race. He's way back. Yeah, 22nd spot at the start and has not improved since then. But for this guy, like everybody else, it's all about the passion to do it. And, and he is such a... Look at his sled, perfectly painted. You know, his team looks great. Oh, yeah. Always well presented, always yeah. so full of heart. 22nd yeah. spot, 300s between them and Team Australia. They had a test of who's the nicest guy on tour. He might win. He's so 
Everybody, well, how can you not like the guy? Yeah. You don't like the result. Well, listen, he's battling the very best in the sport. And he's a gentleman driver and businessman. This is certainly no disgrace in not finishing in the top ten. Being out there and doing it at 43 years of age, same as A.K. Nakayama in the women's skeleton. You've just got to take your hat off to anybody whose dedication is that strong. Our final sled then, and another small nation doing wonders on a tiny budget. Vukran Jenovic for Serbia. Stefan Vujanic, Nikola Milinkovic, and Alexander Budalo okay. on the back. on the back not used to that start and just they left without him 504 push bars are still out uh -oh. he he spotted it now because people get so close to the track yeah he had a lot of problems yesterday the two minutes the first 50 meters start to him skidding all the way down gave him no chance to get that top 20 and with that we just see right there 80 hundreds back he's gonna have to find some afterburner in the bottom part of the track speed 1.19.7, that's the lowest we've seen, I'm afraid, for the Serbs. Four kilometers down to home. Still 74 and a half miles an hour. We're talking about them being slow. Empirically, this is insanely fast on ice. Luka been on the Open Cup Tour all year to qualify for the Olympics. And then his dad, Boris, they lead the program. There's Boris on the left, 84 Olympian for Yugoslavia. Brakes, 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 brakes. <laughs> shooting right out the end it'll do lots of damage to the runners when you run out of ice and get down onto the gravel below that snow yeah, yeah a lot of Concrete. problems curve one okay get in guy turns okay i'd sit down i just don't understand the, he hits the push bars they don't come in yeah so what does he do i panic so he goes i gotta get, look at they aren't coming down so you gotta i gotta do pull my hand. he's doing this yeah. in the curve which means he's in the curve look at the back end of the trying to hang on as well he nearly That's got spat moving out. around moving around look at this guy with the white jacket almost yeah. got hit by the push bar look how close the people are great work on the tape replay the evs boys there's book Great work in the truck to get that shot, the go-away shot into turn one. Well, not the greatest load. They need to polish that up. Talk about big starts, though. Stephen Holcomb's crew of the night train, too, put their man in a position when he sat down behind the steering ropes to really challenge, and he has done so. Took the lead of the race. He leads by 700s from Bayard Hefty, Lyndon Rush in third, John Jackson in fourth, a very tight battle for the medals. Perfect we are in line. For a grand Perfect. stand finale. Perfect lines down here. You had the best start, the best speed, the best velocity all the way down the track. And he went forth and coach Brian Scheimer's excited. Well he should be. Well they will go last in the second heat. The fast 20 of our 24 starters will go through and here's the gaps between them. Holcomb with the slenderest of leads over Baird Hefty, and look at that gold medal rush, no pun intended, behind as Lyndon heads the chasing pack. And from the next six or seven sleds, any of them could be in the medals. And look, we had a tie, a three-way tie for 10th position, Spring, Van Kalka, and Bertazzo. 20th place, David Kupchik makes the second heat. He'll be first off, but Nikolai Estrati, Milan Janicek, Pete Spence, and Vukrad Jenovic do not. Well, that's it from the first of our two heats. Four-man bobsleigh season finale here in Koenigsegg, Bavaria. John, join, join John Morgan and me, Martin Haven. Easy for me to say for the second heat. Coming up shortly, live from Koenigsegg.